I was blinded by the light. <laughs> I hope that's making me look really young. Because it was my birthday yesterday. I'm getting older and older. Jesus. Hi, I'm Sister Bliss, and you're here with me watching Infusion TV. So we're here with Sister Bliss from Faithless. Lovely to meet you. Oh, thank you very much, Vip. Great to be here again. This isn't your first time in the UAE, is it? No, it's not. Um, I've been uh, DJing and, and coming here with Faithless for some years now. We've, we've always had like really the best reception any band or, or DJ could ever have. So yeah, this is the first time I'm doing a, a show as a DJ with Maxi on live vocals though, because as you may know, Faithless retired from playing live uh, in April 2011. And in fact, our, one of our very last gigs was 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 here. One, yeah. I think it was our very last international gig. That was it. Yeah, last time that's we right. saw you here, it was the last ever gig. Was. Everyone was, it was rushing only about out to buy tickets. A week before tickets. Maxi said, "That's it. I don't want to do touring anymore." <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I, you guys I, were lucky. I honestly thought that Maxi would be touring like forever. Like, for generations to come, he would still be touring. Well, you know, I have to say, I'm a bit of a never-say-never never person. Um, maybe that's from hanging around with a Buddhist for nigh on 20 years. <laughs> uh, you know, things are in a, in, a, they're in a cycle, an eternal cycle, if, if Buddhism is to be believed. But, um, you know, I think... I, and I really appreciate why Maxi wanted to kind of call it a day on the touring. Um, it's, it's very stressful physically. It's something that we love doing, but a Faithless show is not like sitting on a song and singing some ballads. It's full on energy for over two hours. Yeah. Maxi's actually going to be 56 this year. He doesn't look it. He and, doesn't at all. And your viewers are probably falling off the sofa <laughs> in shock. But, um,. You know, we've done this for about 17 years, so ne nearly 20 years, which is a big portion of your life to de devote to something. And he also felt that to make the point of having existed was everything has to have an end, you know? Mm -hmm. When you read a book, it comes to an end. And that's the point of the story. And um, we've been trying to say, I guess, the same thing over many albums, you know, six albums and the greatest hits. And, and we also didn't want people to feel, you know, Bored because in music it's, it's notoriously fickle, I think. And he also wanted to go out on a high where we're still headlining festivals. People weren't kind of looking at their watches thinking, oh God, you guys are still here. Um, I mean, for me personally, I could carry on making albums and I'm still making music. And as Maxi is still to this day, it's just in the context of Faithless for whatever reason. He felt very strongly that we'd, he'd, he'd said as much as he could say. Um, and, but we're all very creative and, and I think the beautiful thing is we didn't end because we couldn't stand the sight of each other. You know, I can't wait to see him to play tonight at this fantastic attendance. So what can we expect different from the Faithless gig um, that we saw last time and um, yourselves playing together? Well, the Faithless gig was a full-on live band, an eight-piece live band. This is really a PA, so you mm -hmm. have our music, which um, I've actually kind of done very special bootlegs that you can't hear anywhere else of, of the bigger and most dance orientated Faithless tracks. And Maxi will be coming on, he'll be emceeing, he'll be vibing up the crowd, helping me out. And uh, yeah, I he'll saw be your... doing the biggest records that I guess everybody is, is familiar with. Yeah. I saw on your Twitter feed that there's some new remixes. Uh, you've got a drum and bass remix of one of your tunes. Uh, I just saw you tweeting away. Did I say that? You, what? Was it drum and bass? Um, well, we've had lots of remixes over the years and, and on Facebook to kind of um, go back through the vaults. We've had, um, we, we post up a, a track each week to, to let people comment and remind them, you know, the sort of back catalogue and also that there's some really great little, you know, diamond nuggets in there that they might have forgotten, but that still sound really fresh today. And I think that's another great thing about Faithless is, you know, who knows, maybe if we do come back again one day, that the sound is still really fresh because it was always quite futuristic, yet classic at the same time. It wasn't a slave to fashion. You've always so, been um, great. Who knows? Faithless always have been great at um, crossing genres with um, with all of your music. I mean, you mentioned, like, obviously the six albums, the, uh, the best of, etc. But you've always managed to not just stay within one genre of music. You, you cross a lot of genres. Uh, how do you think that that's attributed to your global success? 
I think absolutely massively actually, even though we are most famous for the dance hits, it brought in an album buying audience. When you sat down and listened to a Faithless album, it went all over the place and it was kind of an accident because when we got together, it was all very naive. And when we met Maxi, he was just so interesting. We're like, hey, you know, let's make an album and let's make it like a mixtape, you know, that you'd send to your friend with your favorite reggae track on and your favorite hip hop track. And, you know, there was no rules really. And maybe also because the dance album as a genre didn't really exist. Um, but it was just because we're passionate about music and we wanted to reflect all the different places we came from. Like Maxi is a hip hop head, even though he's made his name doing vocals on, on house music. But um, what I love about our albums is they're much more three dimensional than just a big, you know, club mix album. Mm -hmm. Although I love that. I mean, I don't hesitate to put on DJ mixes all the time. But it gave space to us to, to sort of pay homage to the music that we really love, which is from, you know, Joni Mitchell to David Bowie to, you know, Dr. Dre and Marshall Jefferson and beyond, really. Um, you've played at some of the biggest festivals in the world. Like, I've personally seen you at Glastonbury. Um, at, like, you were lucky. They were good, weren't they? Yeah, I think that... Apart Rob... from 1998, where it just pissed out of rain. Uh, I was, it, <laughs> no, when was that it two, was not so good. 2004, I think it was, and Rolf Harris was on the same stage. I don't know if he was before you. Um, I was going to say, what a warm up act. And, and I was there and I was like going for it in the, in the crowd. And then Radiohead came on afterwards, and it was such a buzzkill because you left us on such a high. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm devastated. It wasn't, it was Coldplay. <laughs> oh, it was Coldplay? 2000, yes, 2004 was a momentous year. That was a big year. It for was us. great, yeah. Yeah, um, second headline to Coldplay on the main stage. Not yeah. a bad place to be. Not a bad place to be at all. Um, how do the crowds differ over here in the Middle East to, say, your European gigs? Um, I think crowds are pretty much the same the world over. I think what's amazing about Dubai in particular is it's very international. I've had people sort of dialing me up for a guest list who I haven't, you know, haven't seen since school, who've ended up over here. I've met friends from Amsterdam, from Germany, you know, from South America. I mean. This place really draws in a very international crowd, so I really like that. I really like looking out and seeing people from all over the world in one place. There's something quite beautiful about You definitely that. get that here. It's a very multicultural yeah. society in Dubai. Very much so. Um, so that's something I really enjoy. And also we've had the pleasure, uh, apart from one show, always playing outside. And that also has a really special energy to know that the weather's not going to be terrible. <laughs> and, you know, um, not actually like heaving down with rain exactly, like it can be. Exactly. <laughs> so it's made for a really special atmosphere that we've been able to do a few gigs on outside. And I've played at, at quite a few different clubs over the years here, right. which have always been really amazing, especially considering that it's a very substance intolerant society. Um, and I also think maybe being a bit more eclectic as a DJ or as, as a live band actually helps in that situation because it's not quite the same as just getting completely mindlessly messed up <laughs> and, you know, marching to, to a sort of beat. Actually, people are a little bit more conscious yeah. of what's happening with the music if they're just drinking. So that's just true. Different energy. Depends on their level, of, the level of drinking. Of inebriation. Of course, of course it does. <laughs> um, um, what can we expect from yourself uh, in 2013, coming towards the end of the year right now? Um, well, I've got quite a lot going on, which is very exciting. Um, I've actually made an album with Rollo of, uh, of Faithless fame. We, we didn't feel quite like retiring yet, so <laughs> we've been doing something, I would say, in a way similar to Faithless, in that it's a collaborative album mm -hmm. with, with various different vocalists, which is very exciting. It's been very under the radar. We haven't associated ourselves with it because we just wanted people to fall in love with the music because following something like that has been as successful globally as Faithless, there'd be a lot of burden of expectation. So we've just been letting it grow organically and throughout 2012. We've just been releasing little club records and just building and building very slowly. We've had some great radio play and great DJ responses um, without people knowing it's anything to do with Faithless. So that I find exciting because it's kind of like starting again. Um, you know, but hopefully without any snobbery, mm -hmm. if you like. Oh, it's those guys, or oh, you know, we've already had 20 years of them. So uh, that's something that I'm very excited about. Literally, I've been listening to 
very final mixes by the pool, sort of working out where things should go. And basically we'll be locking that down first week of January when I'm home. I'm also starting my own record label. I had one once and uh, managed to put only one record out and then Faithless got really successful. So um, I thought 2013, I've actually got a little bit of time because I'm not touring with the band anymore. Um, I'm going to put out some Sister Bliss tracks and I've done a few remixes as well. So I'm very excited about that and I've signed another artist who I think is very talented. So I feel like the ball's going to start rolling pretty much as soon as I get home. Right. Um, like many DJs have an yeah. imprint. And as I say, I started one, I think in 1994, <laughs> put out one of my own records and then promptly went away around the world it forever just, and ever and it ever. It just took it back further and that was it? It did, yeah. Okay. So look out for Junk Dog Records. Junk Dog Records. That's right. 2013. Excellent. Well, we're definitely looking forward to your gig tonight. I've been a Faithless fan for a very, very long time. Oh, thank you so much. And um, I mean, that would be the one reason that we ever do ever get back together again is because we're so grateful to the fans for everything that they've given us and all the love and the great shows. I just think if we didn't have to travel, it would it, Maxi'd still be going. But do you know he what? just finds that the, the going and the toing and the throwing, that is the killer bit. If we could be teleported into the gig like on Star Trek, <laughs> we'd be there. I mean, we love seeing different parts of the world, don't get me wrong, but we have had a quite punishing schedule. And I also feel like Maxi wanted space to not be tied to a schedule. Yeah. You know, we've been scheduled for a very long time. You know, when he wakes up and thinks, what am I doing next week? And he just doesn't know. <laughs> that to him is definitely exciting, right? And I really appreciate he deserves the space to go, you know what, I've given this band my best years. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I mean, he's always been extremely lively on stage and we love to see you both perform. Um, beyond lively. <laughs> yeah, very true, very true. Like, sometimes I have no idea where he gets the energy from as well. <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? It, it is. is. incredible. Well, look, we're looking forward to the, the gig tonight and um, we're looking forward to seeing your new, new stuff that you're releasing in 2013. Thank you very yeah. much. It'll be up on the Beatport and I hope on iTunes and, and everywhere else as well. So, yeah, Excellent. exciting. So, Fusion TV, watch this space. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.